Yo, people, yo, people. So the decline of Europe has been sad to watch. It really has. And if you're wondering what I mean when I refer to the decline of Europe, well, this is what I mean. <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking already. You're wondering, why did I add that last clip in there? Right, because that last clip is obviously the odd one out. It's very different from the first two that I played, right? You perhaps assumed that this video was going to be solely about the issue of mass migration. But the reason I added that clip in is because it actually represents the wider problem that we are seeing in Europe that is actually causing the European decline. And I'm going to try and lay out step by step as best I can what I think is causing the decline of Europe. Of course, mass migration is a problem. We have a severe migration crisis across Europe, but these things are not happening in an ideological vacuum. You see, it's not the case that mass migration is just some inevitability that must happen. It is, in fact, a direct result of a political ideology, that being neoliberalism, the neoliberal agenda. That is a large part of the cause of mass migration. And how you can tell it is because of the chief values that are put forward by the neoliberals, which are, of course, as I'm sure you well know by now, diversity and tolerance. And that's what brings us to what we see on screen here, because this symbolizes the problems of the diversity and tolerance arms of neoliberalism. Because what neoliberals have done is try to promote diversity and tolerance as virtues, when in reality, diversity and tolerance are both kind of neutral words, right? Diversity is neither good nor bad. You hear this a lot when it comes to racial diversity, that racial diversity is a good, is a must, is a, it's a virtue to have, when in reality, it's a neutral thing, right? There can be good people of all races as there can be bad people of all races. We shouldn't be diverting away from the MLK vision, which is judging people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. But what the neoliberals have been trying to do is promote diversity as a virtue because they want you to feel that what you are seeing on your screen right now, the, the nuttiness of what you just saw on your screen is virtuous. That's the distorted worldview they want you to have. They want you to think that that insanity is virtuous. And by the way, these people don't represent gay people in any capacity. Most gay people don't behave like this. But what they want you to do is accept this insanity as a virtue because it falls under the umbrella of diversity. And then they want to come along and say, well, seeing as you've accepted this as a virtue, of course, you must be tolerant of it. You must tolerate it as a part of your culture, as a part of your life, which is why you see a political party here, the SPD, are sponsoring this garbage. They have an SPD logo in the background. The SPD is supporting this crap because the neoliberal agenda demands that they must, right? And so that's why I played this video, because it is a symbolism. But let's bring this away from the gay rights conference that they're having in Germany and back towards the initial issue I focused on, which was mass migration. Now, let's apply the same frameworks I just laid out to you, but regarding mass migration. We know that the neoliberals are the ones who heavily push for mass migration. It's the same old yappy morons who talk about diversity and tolerance incessantly are the ones who encourage migrants to come here en masse, you know, refugees welcome and whatnot. And one of the ways that they try and do this and they try and facilitate this mass migration is by placing diversity and tolerance as virtues. 
to be pursued. But the diversity that these people seek is not a racial diversity, is not a sexuality-based diversity. The diversity that these people seek is a cultural diversity, essentially multiculturalism. And so when these people are pushing diversity as a virtue in our culture, they're not really referring to racial diversity. Racial diversity is kind of a consequence to some degree of cultural diversity, but it isn't the main aim. The main aim is cultural diversity, specifically multiculturalism. If they can first get you to accept that a diversity of cultures is automatically good, if they can convince you that that is a virtue, that it is a virtue to accept a whole variety of cultures, some of which may be good and some of which may be bad, if they can encourage you to accept all of these different cultures, the presence of all of these different cultures is some kind of virtue. It's an amazing thing, regardless of the content of the cultures. It, it can just it make you accept that these different variety of cultures are good because they fall under the umbrella of diversity, which these people have put forward as a virtue. That's when you're on the first step of the neoliberal agenda. You have now accepted that diversity is a virtue. And as a result, when these people bring in diversity of culture from all across the world, when you bring in all these variety of cultures, you cannot complain. In fact, you must praise it and love it because it's diversity. Diversity is great, right? And that's where tolerance comes in. You're not supposed to just accept diversity in some kind of theoretical sense. You're not just supposed to admire other cultures from a distance and accept their diversity from a distance. No, 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 no. You are going to have your country flooded with all of these different people. And when you absorb all of these new migrants, Right. What will happen is, is that Western governments will make no requirements of them. So it's not as if these people will be required to come here and assimilate to, say, British culture. They won't be required to do that. And so what will happen is they will effectively come and bring their own culture and try and implement it to some degree here. And that's where tolerance comes in. They want you to be tolerant of that. They don't want you to just accept the beauty of the diversity of the varying cultures. They want you to be tolerant of the implementation of those various cultures in your own country. They want you to be tolerant as you watch all of these wide variety of cultures and ideas, some of which may be good, some of which may be bad, completely displace your national culture. You may be wondering, why do the neoliberals want to do this? Why do the neoliberals want to displace our national cultures? There has to be some kind of reason for it. They can't just be doing it for the fun of it. And you are correct, because I haven't actually touched on the wider picture just yet. I've widened the picture beyond mass migration. I've explained to you why it is that you are seeing the mass migration that you are seeing. I've explained to you the ideological roots, or at least I've tried to, perhaps inarticulately, but I've tried. But the wider reason and the main reason, I think, that the neoliberal agenda is being pushed so heavily is because it falls under the rubric of globalism. Globalism and the globalists are a big problem here. The neoliberal agenda is serving the globalist agenda. That is the entire point of why it is being implemented, I think. It's because the globalists have decided that the best way to implement globalism is to force the neoliberal diversity and tolerance agenda on everybody. Because the neoliberal diversity and tolerance agenda will facilitate the mass migration that we're seeing across Europe. And the reason why the globalists do this, the reason why this fuels the globalist agenda, is very simple. If the neoliberals can achieve their goal, if the neoliberals can so thoroughly dilute, say, British culture. I'll use British culture as an example. If they can so thoroughly dilute British culture by importing foreign nationals from all over the world, from all kinds of places, not requiring them to assimilate, not requiring them to integrate, and instead allowing them to effectively import their own cultures into the United Kingdom, then what you will see is a dilution and eventually a dissolution of British culture. And if you're still wondering why this feeds the globalist agenda, it's very, very simple, right? What the globalists are trying to do is destroy any sense of national pride and national identity by diluting the national culture, which is where a lot of national pride and national identity derives from. They do not want you to feel any connection to your own country. And they know that one of the biggest ways you feel a connection to your country is through the culture, the common culture that you all share within a given country. And so if they can dilute that, if they can dissolve it, get rid of it, and turn your country into effectively a blank canvas upon which anyone can paint, culturally speaking. A canvas upon which anybody can paint will likely never lead to a beautiful painting. It will likely look like a horrible mess. And that is exactly the point. These people want your culture to be a horrible, horrible mess because they don't want you to feel an affinity to it because they know that that's what drives your national pride and national identity. 
and more specifically, your sense of nationalism. Now are you seeing the connection? I hope you're seeing the connection now. I hope I'm connecting this well here. Again, please let me know down in the comments if you disagree with anything I said, if I'm being inarticulate here, perhaps. But as we all know, nationalism is the opposing force to globalism. The reason why people do not accept nationalism is because they feel an affinity, a connection to their national culture, to their national identity, and as a result, to their nation. And they feel the desire to preserve that culture, that identity, and as a result, preserve their nation state. And the desire to preserve the nation state is exactly what the globalists do not want because it runs directly in the face of the globalist agenda. But the thing is, if the globalists have succeeded in destroying your national culture, like I said, you're not gonna feel any need to defend your nation. You don't feel any need to stand up to the globalists and say, I wanna keep my nation. I don't wanna live under one global rule because you don't feel like there's anything worth defending there. Destroying your nationalism is the point. That's why they push the neoliberal agenda. And that's why the neoliberal agenda enforces the current mass migration crisis that we are seeing throughout Europe. I hope I've been clear as to the connections here. If, if you have any queries as to what I'm saying, if you perhaps don't understand exactly what I'm articulating here, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and clarify. Because I know what I think in my own head, but I'm sometimes an inarticulate guy. So maybe I'm not getting my point across well enough. But I hope I've laid out to you what is causing the decline of Europe and that the roots of it is the globalist agenda. Now that we've identified this as a concern, we have to ask yourself, well, what can we do to stop it? Well, one thing we can do is take attitudes similar to this. Do not come to the Polish border. What will happen if you do and you try to enter illegally? You might be killed. If you will come here illegally, you will try to harm any of our soldiers. You will be killed. Now, of course, I'm not advocating that you kill migrants who come to the border. Now, obviously, if they attack soldiers and threaten their lives, that may well be a different matter. That's a self-defense thing. But I'm, of course, not advocating that migrants be shot dead the moment they come at the border. I do think that that's a bit of an extreme position. But the overarching point that he is making here is the point that I think we should acknowledge and perhaps embrace a little bit, which is the tough stance against mass migration, a tough stance against neoliberalism and globalism. We must be very clear that we are going to preserve our nation states, preserve our cultures, and we will not allow cultural dilution to run rampant in our nations anymore. That is the way to stop the globalist agenda that you are seeing destroying the continent of Europe right now. I say this in my country all the time, we need people like Nigel Farage who are willing to defend and preserve the existence of the nation state of Britain, who are willing to defend and preserve British culture because they like British culture. They think British culture is good and they do not wish to see it replaced in Britain. You need to elect leaders like that who are willing to stand up to the globalist regime. And just as a starting point, who are willing to say, you know, we are going to enforce our own borders. We are not going to just allow, as the EU man tries to mandate us to, to just accept as many migrants as feel like coming over into our country. We are not going to accept that, even if you fine us heavily if we do, which I believe the EU is doing to Poland and Hungary right now. You need to have a, an elected government that decides to preserve your national culture. And I'm not saying that that can't be done whilst also facilitating some level of immigration. That, of course, can be done alongside immigration. Not all immigrants are going to come to your country and try and dilute the culture. We've seen many immigrants from all over the world come to European countries and be a net benefit and integrate and assimilate. And that's fine. And that's great. And that's the kind of immigration system that people across Europe should seek. My system in Britain would simply be, we first decide how many people we can take in on a resource basis, how many additional people we can even accept. And then once we've determined that, we can then start to do a rigorous assessment of all the migrants that are applying to come to our country through the legal process. And then we can accept the ones in that we think will integrate, assimilate, and be of net benefit to Britain. That would be my personal approach to the issue, because it is an immigration system that still allows for the thriving of the British culture in Britain. It does not force multiculturalism on us. It does not force us to embrace cultures from all over the world, replacing our own in our own country. That's something that we do not want. That's not racism or bigotry. And part of the way you engage in this preservation of, of your national culture is by enforcing your own borders, by taking a tough stance against the garbage neoliberal agenda. And that's exactly what the Polish government is doing. And that is why now, bizarrely enough, something that 
I never thought I would see in my lifetime. Countries like Poland and Hungary are effectively the role models of Europe now. People are trying to follow their lead. And so that's that's the, my kind of pathway towards resisting the globalist agenda, the neoliberal agenda, the mass migration agenda. But yeah, let me know what you lot think about this down below. Let me know if you agree or disagree. And uh, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.